Okay, thank you guys very much. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about wit.ai uh, and uh, natural language processing. Um, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit about just what wit AI is and what it does. But first, I want to talk to you kind of a little bit about um, some general concepts. So um, my overview is that talking to humans is hard. Um, if there is kind of one big concept that I want you to take away from this as it concerns um, natural language processing and artificial intelligence, it's that uh, human language is this really big and complicated thing. And uh, we've made a, like a huge amount of progress over the last you know, 50 years or so in terms of uh, giving uh, computers the ability to interact with natural human language. But it's this massive problem. Um, we've got really big commonly used tools now like Google Translate, we might look at Google Translate and say, wow, you know, we've got so many languages enabled on Google Translate, and it generally does a really good job. So you know, shouldn't uh, computers be able to interact with natural human language in a, in a pretty robust way, given that um, idea? But there's so much more that goes into language that, um, that it's difficult to teach to a computer, right? Think about something like uh, sarcasm. You know, how would you, knowing what you know now, write into a program, uh, if sarcastic, do this, right? Else, do something else. Uh, if lying, do this, right? Do we know, uh, you know what the uh, intent of our user is? Um, the main idea is context. There's a lot of context that goes into communication in natural human language that it's difficult to tell a computer about. So that's where natural uh, language processing comes into play. Uh, so I'm going to talk about what it is exactly. It's a very large field. I'm going to give a pretty broad overview of just a few of the things that are going on in natural language processing. I'm going to talk about um, why it's important for tech, why it's important for the types of things that we're learning here at Fullstack. Uh, I'm going to talk about what wit.ai is. I'm going to talk about how it uses natural language processing. I'm going to try to give a vague idea of how it's doing what it's doing, but it's uh, some very complicated stuff. I'm going to show you how you can use it. So hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you guys have a little bit of an idea of how you could build a, uh, a smart app that can interact uh, with a user using natural language. And I'm going to show you just a little kind of snippet, a little tool that wit.ai is using to uh, make possible what they do. So uh, this is actually a surprisingly concise Wikipedia definition for what natural language processing is. And I've pointed out a couple of things that I really want to uh, focus on here um, that are going to be important for some concepts that we talk about later. So really quickly, natural language processing is a field of computer science, artificial intelligence, and computational linguistics uh, concerned with interaction between human computers and natural human languages. So the couple of things that I want to point out about this are um, this is concerned with programming computers to process large natural language corpora, right? This means that essentially what we want to be able to do is uh, have computers process a large amount of either written text or uh, spoken human language and figure out rules based on uh, that information, right? Um, we uh, know a little bit about machine learning from workshops that we've done in here, and we've kind of talked about um, some of these algorithms that are able to uh, help computers learn rules based on large amounts of information. Uh, so uh, this talks about a couple of the different challenges going on in um, sort of the current uh, state of natural language processing. Uh, two things that I want to point out are natural language understanding and natural language generation, right? How do we get computers to understand what it is that you're talking about, uh, parse that into some information that they can do something with, and then do the reverse of that process, take you know, uh, some data that computers are able to do something with and change it back into a response that you can understand. And uh, those are sort of the pillars of what wit.ai does. So we will uh, see that in just a little bit when we get to talking more specifically about that. 
Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about just some of the things going on in the general field of natural language processing. Again, this is a really big field, um, and it's not just you know computer scientists working on this stuff. It's um, linguists, it's mathematicians, um, all kinds of people sort of working in this field on a huge amount of different problems. Uh, again, the thing that I want to harp on is that human language is this very massive and very complicated thing, so there's all kinds of different fields. Uh, one of the big ones that's really popular, um, especially for developers to use in apps right now, is sentiment analysis. And the uh, Google Natural Language Processing API um, it does a, a really good job of uh, this feature. Basically, what sentiment analysis means is analyzing a body of text or speech for sentiment, right? So people will use this to kind of analyze the way that um, consumers are talking about their products online. Um, there was a full stack student, I think, who did a project using the Google Natural Language Processing API, and they built an app that allowed you to um, type in a Twitter handle, and you could get like a general sentiment analysis of the body of tweets, like the last 250 tweets or something from that user, and would kind of talk about is the language generally positive or negative. It would give you some adjectives, I think, that were characteristic of the kind of language that that user uh, uses on Twitter. Um, I think that person does some example with uh, some examples with you know like politicians Twitters and it was pretty interesting stuff. Um, so that's on YouTube I think. Uh, machine translation um, again going back to the Google Translate thing. This is a really hard problem right because uh, we can um, see you know a, a body of text translated in a very literal and context free way. But there's all kinds of context things that it's difficult to tell a computer about. So the reason that I you know, indicate that this is very hard. A lot of these problems, um, particularly translation and um, understanding and generation, are uh, identified as, I believe it's called AI complete. So in the field of artificial intelligence, that's sort of a way of um, uh, analyzing the difficulty of a problem uh, that means that the difficulty of that problem is the same as the difficulty of the central artificial intelligence problem, which is producing a computer with comparable intelligence to a human being. Right? So um, it means that it requires all of the types of intelligence that human beings have to be able to solve that problem. Um, another thing that uh, we do in natural language processing is part of speech tagging, grammatical analysis, and uh, disambiguation, both grammatical disambiguation and word sense disambiguation. So do you guys remember you know, these um, sentence trees from school and having to diagram out? Um, I went to college for linguistics, so I had to do a lot of this. Um, but you know, mapping out uh, the, um, the grammar structure of a given sentence. And this sentence that we see here is mapped in two different ways. It says, I will hit the fly with the newspaper, right? And if you were to give that to a computer um, and have them analyze sort of the sentiment or the meaning of that sentence, it could come out two different ways depending on uh, where the fly with the newspaper uh, is associated, right? Am I using the object, a newspaper, in order to hit the fly? Or is there a fly that has a newspaper and I'm trying to hit it? <laughs> you can decide. Uh, and then, once again, um, language understanding and generation um, is, is a big issue uh, that we're going to talk about in a little bit and kind of get a glimpse into how wit.ai handles that. Uh, first, I want to briefly give you a um, history of sort of how the field of computer science has, has handled these problems. Uh, there's been a huge interest in natural language processing since uh, around the 1950s and how we can sort of incorporate it into computers and make computers able to uh, intelligently interact with humans using human language. Essentially, there, uh, you know, up until around the 1980s, there was sort of the old approach of just writing a whole bunch of rules for a computer to follow based on input, right, which isn't actually intelligent, you know. Uh, given what all of us know now, we could uh, write you know, a program that interacts with a user in a way that seems decently intelligent just based on uh, giving responses based on certain input, right? Uh, the problem with this approach is that it's not very flexible. You know, what happens if our user, um, if it's text-based and our user misspells a word and we can't uh, process the appropriate response? 
Uh, as the size of our program grows, we want to make our you know, chatbot or whatever it is able to uh, do more things, handle more inputs. It gets more and more complicated, uh, more difficult to process. Um, and like I mentioned, it doesn't, uh, doesn't handle any kind of error, be it you know, a, a typo or um, just using a phrase that we don't know. So an example of this, uh, of this kind of chatterbot uh, was developed at MIT in the 1960s. It was called Eliza. Uh, I think Joseph Weizenbaum was the name of the guy who made it. If you guys want to look it up, it's pretty interesting. Eliza was meant to imitate a, um, a certain type of like psychotherapist, I think. Uh, and what the, what the guy who made this was trying to do was essentially show that uh, computers were not yet able to actually have intelligent interactions with human beings in human language. Because uh, Eliza was just based on a set of rules. And uh, I don't know if this person was trying to like, take a jab at psychoanalysis or something, but it gave very vague and unhelpful answers. Um, to people's questions. So it's probably kind of hard to see this, but I'll read it for you a little bit. Uh, Eliza says, what's your name, dear? And she says, uh, oh, it says admit, I think. Hi, I'm Eliza. What do you want to talk about? Can I talk about my problem? Sure. Due to ongoing exams in college, I have a lot of stress. Please relax a little. Sleep well. Thanks for your advice. No mention. Bye. And Eliza says, bye, and keep in touch. So Eliza's not that intelligent and not that helpful. Um, so uh, fast forward to uh, around the 1980s um, when uh, algorithms uh, based in statistical inference start to enable us to uh, analyze large bodies of information and enable computers through you know, machine learning to essentially figure out rules from large amounts of information and then learn based on those rules. Uh, let's talk a little bit about wit.ai. Wit.ai was a uh, Y Combinator startup, I think, that uh, started in 2013 as a private beta. Uh, they were picked up by Facebook in 2015. In 2016, uh, Facebook opened its Messenger platform. So the reason that I mentioned that is because I think that right now, um, for uh, developers and for tech companies, there's a lot of opportunity with, uh, with bots, with chat bots. Um, because uh, people want to be able to interact with tech in a more natural way, right? So whereas you know, in the past we might have downloaded a bunch of different apps to book our travel, to talk to our friends, to do this and that, um, in the future you know, it looks like things are going towards the development of sort of things like uh, the Google Assistant or stuff, something like that, Alexa, things that we will interact with in a natural way that will, will perform these tasks for us. Um, I think that Facebook launched some kind of assistant that you can interact with on Messenger called like Facebook M or something like that. I can't remember, but check that out. Um, so I'm going to skip over this a little bit because I think I'm kind of running over on time here. Um, but this is, this is something that you can look into that basically captures what is so complex about um, making a bot that can interact with people in a natural way, right? There's lots of different combinations of things that can be happening because language is uh, essentially an infinitely creative combination of things, right? We have maybe a dictionary that tells us, you know, what words that exist in our language, but there's no way uh, to determine how many possible utterances there are in our language, right? We can do all different kinds of things. So I'm going to quickly give you guys a little bit of a demo of how wit.ai works. Uh, I think I'm going over here, but basically the core of what wit.ai does is parse uh, user's input into data that you can do something with. And uh, then you tell your, you know, you perform your action on your end in whatever language you want. Uh, it's not just limited to JavaScript. Uh, the business end of your bot, your logic that you write on your own, doesn't have anything to do with what wit.ai does. And then you give your uh, processed info back to wit.ai, and it will send a message to your user. Um, oops, this is the end. I want to get out of this real quick and go over to the wit console. Um, I'm just going to show you guys an app that I've already started making instead of going through. Oh, boy. I'm having some, my computer's having a party. 
OK, so um, just to give you guys a quick uh, sort of feel for what the um, console looks like when you log into wit.ai, you can sign up through GitHub or Facebook um, and go into the console and make a new app. It's really easy and intuitive. Basically, the way that wit.ai works is you start off by writing a few rules. So you're kind of operating on that old model of writing rules, giving some input to your bot and telling it you know, pretty explicitly after I've done this processing on my end um, in my app what it is that you're going to want the bot to do. Uh, the sort of user interface is uh, really easy and intuitive. There is lots of um, tutorials and sort of, they call them recipes, you know, different things that you could want your bot to do um, to, to talk to your user. Uh, over here on the side, there's a lot of really good documentation and guidance for how to use it. But basically, everything is based in these things called stories. You categorize your story by its intent. You know, what is your user trying to do? What does it want to find out? Uh, you are able to then extract entities from your user's input. So things like, are they trying to get or give information about a location, about a time, uh, about the weather, things like that. And then you are able to um, essentially set the context over here in, oh my gosh, you guys, I don't know what's going on with my computer. I'm sorry. No, I think it has something to do with the dongle. What's that? Oh, it is. It's not working. <laughs> OK, well, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, but you can go on to here and uh, check out you know, what it is that wit.ai enables you to do. Integrating it into your app is a whole other set of things, but the documentation is really good. And uh, that's all. Thanks. <laughs>